Good morning. We are going to do something a little bit different today. We're going to show the world what it's like to drive a 40 year old Mercedes diesel station wagon. 75 miles, round trip, commuting to work every day. It's about you. Staying in. You're staying in. Huh? Yep. Here's the temperature. Fahrenheit on the left, Celsius on the right. And it was not plugged in. There's no block heater on that car. This is part of the drill. Okay. Home safe. So we're off to the races here. Um, it's 20 degrees outside. I let the car warm up for a while. I mean, it's a diesel. It's an old diesel, you know? Let it warm up. Sometimes I'll let the thing warm up 15 minutes at least. Just because I'm getting ready, whatever. As you can see, the tachometer jumps around. I don't know if it has right now, but usually it's not functioning correctly. Uh, I put the different tires on it. The speedometer is off roughly five miles an hour. Well, here's a little pull, okay? I'm not flooring it, but you can see that tachometer is actually holding true right now. It's a driver, you know? I mean, this car is not some crazy dog. The turbo definitely, you can definitely tell that turbo is working. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you can get up to speed, and like I said, it's it's not completely warmed up yet, so I don't want a really hot dog on it. Might as well go over this video as, as kind of an update. It's not your normal wrenching video or whatever, but you know what? Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, buddy. This uh, video is gonna be what it's like to drive a 40 year old car daily, okay? I drive almost 40 miles one way to work, so it's, almost, it's about 75 miles round trip every day. And um, that's one big reason why I bought this car. I wanted to get something a little bit more fuel efficient. The other night, first time having this issue, headlight switch, okay? The headlights, as you notice, are off. There's something's wrong with the switch, and I know it's a switch, but something's wrong with the switch where when I turn it on to, you know, with the headlights, well, then one headlight would go on. Well, then I'd pull it out for fog lights, and still only one headlight and one fog light were on on driver's side. So as I was fiddling with the, well, I went up, fiddled with the wiring, that didn't fix it. Then I fiddled, fiddled with the switch more, and I got it to turn on, turn off, you know, I had both headlights on. So I know the switch is finicky. Um, that's something that's gotta get fixed. Hopefully this is a good angle. Camera angle to the dangle here. You know, people don't realize how much little thing, how many little things go wrong on an old car. If you've never driven a car that's 15 years or older, really 20 years, I'd say like 20 years or older, you don't, <laughs> Older vehicles just um, totally break all the time. <laughs> I mean, it's just the way it is. It's not like you try to get good ones that don't have major problems, like major, major problems, transmission, engine, stuff like that. But you don't know. You, you never know. But what I can guarantee you as any vehicle that you have, especially if it's 40 years old, like this car is 30, 40 years old, there will be little things going wrong with it all the time like the headlight switch i'm sure all i gotta do is i don't know but i'm 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 sure i don't have to replace the switch maybe i do but even if i do it's not that difficult to replace that switch people have never driven an old car like that they have no idea they just don't even know that <laughs> this will drive and if they're not mechanically inclined it'll just they'll bring it to the shop for one headlight and i mean that'll just it'll bury you you can't it's too much money. These cars are too expensive if you can't work on them yourself. 
because of little things like that. This video will be definitely for people that really haven't had an old older cars often and are thinking about getting one of these old 300 TD, 300 Ds, 300 CDs. It doesn't matter. All the old OM617s in the Mercedes platform. It's the W123 chassis. Anybody who's interested in getting one of those cars as a daily and they haven't pulled the trigger yet, this video is kind of for them uh, because it's you know, I'm living it. So I've only owned the car for three months. I've been daily driving it for like two months. So I've put 2,000 miles on it. Um, so I have a decent idea what it's like. This particular vehicle, I'm burning slash leaking about a quart and a half of oil every 1,500 miles. Not terrible. I mean, in my opinion, it's not terrible. The car is 40 years old, has 192,000 miles on it. If that's the accurate cluster, I don't know. Someone could have changed the cluster. I have no idea. You, you don't no and it really doesn't matter honestly <laughs> there, there was one thing i got my coffee between my legs here because there's no cup holders in these old vehicles it's got a really bad leak i think it's the sunroof didn't even investigate it yet um water leak that is when it, as far as you know rain water and all so i keep it in the garage and I only drive it if it's going to be dry you know not going to rain that day um and it's springtime well actually i think i think today is the first day of spring actually it's springtime in northeastern pennsylvania it rains a lot here i don't live in arizona in the desert it's i can't drive this car every day but every day that i drive this car i drive a third gen cummins and uh that truck doesn't get the best fuel mileage i mean it's a much bigger vehicle um but i'm that that's my other vehicle right so when i drive this car it's at the, at the current fuel prices of diesel today in, in, the, in Pennsylvania where I live, I am saving roughly $8 a day. That's round trip. So every day I drive this car, I save $8 and I keep doing it. And you know what? The more you do it, the more you save. So I just keep trying to drive the car. There's a couple things I've done to it since the last video, minor things. Um, I have checked on the air cleaner to see if my air cleaner modification has worked. It, it definitely improved it. It's not 100% yet. I do want to do another modification. Maybe I'll, I'll roll in a clip to show that. Maybe not, but I'll definitely show that there's, like the air filter's not black with oil. It, it used to be a bath in there. Um, there's a little bit in the, in the bottom of the air cleaner, but it's not anything. Like it, it used to be so bad that it would fill the air cleaner up completely but not completely but it would fill the entire bottom of the air cleaner up and there was a hole there's a drain hole in the bottom of it and it would just start weeping down that drain hole and then it was covering the whole side the whole passenger side of the engine that's been 1500 miles since i did that so that i'm gonna call that fixed the blower motor oh my gosh the heater blower motor was squealing like a pig it was so annoying i did that since the day i bought it um, but it was just real faint and then it just got terrible screeching. So I pulled the blower motor out. There's three bolts There's other videos on YouTube that other people have posted on that, but it's pretty simple You pull three bolts out like screws essentially and then you pull the wiring off And then what I did is I flipped it upside down I blew out all the dust and crap flip it upside down and I put on um, like a light motor oil That's meant for electric motors down the shaft of the, the motor the blower motor and I just let it soak in there kind of warmed it up a little bit actually to try and get it thinner to run down the, the uh, motor shaft and you know what they fixed it um, they're known to kind of go bad after a while but I've been running it for 1500 miles like that and it hasn't squealed yet so I'll just keep lubricating it before I go buying a new one I lubricated all the throttle uh, linkage as you saw in one of the videos the throttle pedal has been really kind of rough it has, it's not a smooth throttle so i took the floor mat out and dove under there and looked under there and see what was going on and sure enough there's a there's like a collar with a with a metal steel rod that it slides up and down and it's all worn down on, on the metal on the steel so it's all from you know no lubrication so i took some of that dirt bike chain oil and i lubricated that um and then there's another pivot point at the firewall at, for the throttle pedal and I, I lubricated that because that plastic on it so I use that same same lubricant 
And I'll tell you what, now it is a smooth throttle. I'm talking like butter. And there's like 15 linkages that thing's moving. You guys are pretty lucky that the tachometer is working flawlessly during this drive. I mean, I don't think it's ever happened. The clock functions down there in the bottom right. That thing works great. Um, I mean, it's really it's hard to, you know, you drive it every day. You kind of forget the things that happen or don't happen or whatever. Oh, the climate control. My climate system does not work right. So it blows warm air um, out the feet, out the defrost, it pulls it all out in the same area no matter what switch you put. So this little button's broken but you still can use it. So what I do is I just leave it on this eco mode and I put this all the way on hot and then I'll, uh, I'll just switch on from low fan to high fan. Low fan to high fan and if it gets hot in here, if it gets warm outside, I just turn it off and that does turn it off. But that's how I regulate the heat in here. If it's in the teens or colder, it, can, it, it can't really keep up. Yeah, I don't have a rear view mirror. It's kind of a bummer, I need to get one. Windows, oh here we go. The back passenger window does work and the driver uh, window works, that's it. The other two windows do not work. It doesn't have a rear windshield wiper, so I can't use it, obviously it doesn't even have one. It does have squirters in the back too, actually. It has windshield, or, uh, rear window washers but I don't, I never even tested it. The tank's back there, I just never tested to see if it works because I don't have a wiper. I think this is a common problem, but every once in a while the key will, uh, you kinda gotta jiggle around the key to get the ignition to work. It, it, it's just little finicky things. The glove box works, but you, have, you can't just slam it shut. You have to hold the latch to make it work. You know, these are all the little things that a 40 year old car, and in reality, the interior of this car is nice for how old it is. It is a nice interior. I mean, it is in good shape. The back seats are in super good shape. Even the rear estate seats, which is the what they call the rear facing seats back there, totally good shape. Got the Mercedes symbol up there. Yeah, buddy. And she'll pull this hill. I, mean, I don't know what the grade is of this hill, whatever. But it'll pull this hill easy. It's not that steep, but people wonder, you know, is this diesel? Some diesels are terrible. Older ones that are especially naturally aspirated ones, it's rough. This car, you can you can drive this car. She'll be turning some RPM, but well buddy, she'll do it. See we're screaming now. She smokes when you have high RPM, so I gotta I gotta there's some things I gotta do I haven't even touched. And it's the, uh, I gotta, I gotta really look at the injectors. I gotta really look at the, uh, I gotta adjust the valves and I have to rebuild or check the injectors. That's, those are the two next big items on the list. But anyway, that's the end of it. I'll leave you with the old European horn here. <laughs>